What is DevSecOps and how can you get in it right now if you wanted to switch careers and get into cybersecurity and specialize in DevSecOps? Now, my name's Charlie. I'm a Chief Information Security Officer and I'm only 31. I achieved that in under 10 years, but most of my career, I specialized in and focused on something known as DevSecOps. I got into the kind of world of DevSecOps and defined a lot of the working practices in DevSecOps very early in my career. And I used that DevSecOps working practice and what I taught myself because I didn't really consider myself being super technical before, for example. I didn't do a cyber degree or an actual technical degree. I did politics, for example. So I had to upskill myself in areas of DevSecOps. And I'll, I'll explain how I did that and how you can do that as well. So what is DevSecOps, first of all? DevSecOps is a working practice. It's a cultural and a technical change at an organization that focuses on what we call shifting security left. So when you build an application and thousands and millions of organizations across the world build apps, write software, what we want to do in DevSecOps is we want to make sure that the software and the tests that that software goes through and all the working practices that include governance practices, automated testing, security scanning, all these practices happen way, way early on when we write the code and come up with the idea of building the app before we launch the app to the public. Because the moment we launch the app, we call it to production and it's publicly facing. If there are vulnerabilities found in that application, it's obviously it can be exploited. It looks bad for you. Um, hackers can access it potentially and there'll be vulnerabilities. And then to fix those problems, it costs a lot of time. There'll be downtime on the application potentially. Um, you have to then bring on board old engineers to try and fix some of the code base. The best thing to do is shift security left of what we call the software development lifecycle. So that's the lifecycle where we write our code, come up with our ideas, build out our requirements. That gets tested, goes through loads of different practices of the software development lifecycle, and then it goes into production. Now, DevSecOps, so cybersecurity traditionally over the years, and when I was early in my career, I used to have people come up to me at my desk and they'd be like, right, we've just launched a new app and it went live two weeks ago, can you now secure it? And the answer would always be, well, no, you know, we can do a pen test, but if we find these findings, we've got to do this, we've got to do this, we might even stop it going public if we find things that are really bad. So the idea is that you integrate in software development best practices, as well as product teams and other key teams in the tech business to actually shift security left and put those practices in place. Now, not many companies are doing this right or at all. Um, and I have to, when I go to interview and when I built, so I've built DevSecOps teams from the ground out. I've embedded myself in software engineering teams and defined how to do DevSecOps and created my own templates, my own working practices on how to run DevSecOps at organizations and I've successfully done it. Um, I built an entire, my last organization, I was uh, head of security engineering and I built out an entire DevSecOps team that at one point was about 16 DevSecOps engineers across the business, all of which I hired, skilled and ran and did the strategy for the team as well. So there's a big, big demand in this area. Lots more companies want to do it because if they do true DevSecOps, they find vulnerabilities quicker, they can push code to production quicker and more frequently as well, deploy apps more frequently. And just that whole process, I mean, well, we saw what happened with CrowdStrike, for example, where they weren't doing appropriate testing before going to release. This is all about DevSecOps best practices, okay? So cybersecurity has changed massively. From 10 years ago, when I first got into cyber, we were very much focusing on securing on-premise applications. We weren't doing DevSecOps, no one really, pipeline technology didn't really exist. Teams were just directly committing code to repositories, for example. Um, and with DevSecOps, we've changed that. And as those work in practices, we've changed. So where was that turning point for me? So I'd say two years into my cyber career, about eight years ago, I started embedding myself in software engineering teams actually sitting down with the software engineers, joining what's called their stand-up meetings, and just getting familiar with the technology. And I remember I was sitting down with a DevOps engineer on one of their, um, their stand-ups, and he was like, yeah, we're running this Jenkins pipeline, we're doing this. I was like, well, what's that? How does that work? And then um, I got him to show me. I then went home. We, we was in Azure at the time, and um, I loaded up Azure DevOps. I started building my own Azure DevOps pipeline. I didn't really know what I was doing. I wasn't really technical, but I started integrating these security steps, these security scanners. And I was like, brilliant, that's really cool. And then I was like, well, actually it'd be really useful to hold a threat modeling workshop with this software engineering team. So they know the vulnerabilities and threats to their application and the actual context of the risk to their app. 
So I built out this template on how to do threat modeling. And I ran that with the software engineering team and it was great. They were like, we understand what we're doing now. We know where to look for things like SQL injection, where to run our scans. And then I built and integrated all their security as part of their pipeline. I actually got hands-on configuring YAML files and things. I wasn't a software engineer before, but I upskilled myself. I'd go home in the evenings, learn this technology. And I ended up creating a toolkit at this particular organization eight years ago, where I was like, this is how DevSecOps should be. And this was very, very early on. People weren't really talking about DevSecOps. I knew I was working with the software engineering teams and fixing their problems really early on before it was going to production and relying on penetration tests, for example. So then I realized it was a thing and I really upskilled myself in DevOps, DevOps best practices. I got AWS uh, Solutions Architect. I taught myself Terraform, which is infrastructure code and how you do deployments because it's during those pipeline steps when the engineers write their code, commit it, it goes into the pipeline, the pipeline jobs run and the steps run. We integrate our security steps. So I strongly recommend you get familiar with GitHub Actions because it's really easy to create GitHub Actions pipelines. I'm going to do future videos on how to do that as well as Azure DevOps pipelines. Those I would say are arguably Jenkins is an old technology that's not really in use anymore because you have to typically host it. But those two technologies are really, really key if you want to learn true DevSecOps. And you can, by the way, I've hired DevSecOps apprentices, interns, people with no previous tech experience. You can get straight into DevSecOps if you learn the right skills and you do the right things. Traditional cybersecurity, a lot of people are still learning the old ways of cybersecurity, which focuses on on-prem and things like that. Try and ignore that because that is not the future of cybersecurity and tech. This space, DevSecOps, is the true future of it. So if you want to get into DevSecOps, Check out some of my roadmap videos where I actually go through some of the steps on um, how to actually upskill the types of technology you need to get familiar with. Um, and then look at and teach yourself in your spare time. Okay, actually get familiar with the technology, create pipelines, run automated scans, teach, I've got a, three, a free threat modeling um, GitHub repo that I've actually put together where it's all like written down in Markdown. It's really easy to follow. Um, so check out my future videos on how to actually do that and follow those steps because I'm going to do a whole video on threat modeling, for example. But you can learn this technology stuff. Teach yourself a bit of basic coding, right? Learn a little bit of Python, but you don't have to become an expert. Definitely learn Terraform so you understand how to do infrastructure as code and make sure you understand cloud technology. Arguably, those things have nothing to do with cybersecurity, funny enough. But you have to learn and understand this stuff to secure the teams that do these working practices. And everyone at every company is pretty much using Terraform now. They're all using pipelines. So you want to integrate your security within that technology. You have to understand that technology. So you, a lot of the focus in DevSecOps is on that space, but it's doing it from the context of a security perspective. What can attacker do? How can they do this? So that's why we run threat modeling workshops, because there's no point in putting loads of really good security controls in a really detailed pipeline job for an app that's internally facing, doesn't really get updated much. Like, you wouldn't do that. That's why we do threat modeling, so we can focus on the key parts of the app and where we should fail the build if there's a critical. Do you really want to do that for every app? Not particularly. So that's why we do threat modeling, and that's why cybersecurity has to come from, or DevSecOps have to come from a cybersecurity perspective and not a DevOps perspective. Because actually, and I've seen this done many a time, that's the wrong way to do it because it's the context on the risks that has to come from people that are experts in cybersecurity. So first and foremost, upskill yourself in cybersecurity. Teach yourself pipelines, cloud technology, then integrate your security tooling and practices within those pipeline jobs, for example. Then you put in together the cultural practice. So for example, I always put together a DevSecOps champions program at organizations where actually I ask software engineers if they're interested in DevSecOps and if they want to join a kind of a monthly meeting where I'll teach them how to run certain steps, how to run threat modeling workshops. That's all about a cultural shift on how to shift security left and follow DevSecOps. So there's a lot of tools you can put in place, technical and procedural as well, okay? Things like writing security requirements in JIRA boards, having user anti-attacker stories that come from the threat modeling. All these flows, all these processes are all true DevSecOps. So follow some of my future videos. I'm gonna be doing a lot more content on this. Um, I've been a DevSecOps expert for many years now. I've built teams out from the ground up and I've actually got hands on and done this myself. So good luck, reach out to me if you have any questions. Upskilling DevSecOps, there is a huge, huge demand. This is the new area of cybersecurity. The whole future of cybersecurity is now in DevSecOps. So you have to, if you wanna get in cyber, you have to learn these things. Good luck.